The keynote lecture will be followed by a panel session, and our panelists were chosen from Greece, Europe, and the US to reflect the various approaches in science and engineering education. So let me introduce to you our panelists. Uh, Pericles Mitkas is a professor in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering at the Aristotle University of Thessaloniki and also serves as the president of the Hellenic Authority for Higher Education. Professor Mitkas received his diploma in electrical engineering from the Aristotle University of Thessaloniki. Okay. Uh, Pericles Mitkas is uh, the president of the Hellenic Authority for Higher Education. Apostolis Dimitropoulos is the secretary general for higher education at the Greek Ministry of Education and Religious Affairs. Uh, Margarita Hli is a professor in robotic vision and director of the vision for robotics labs at the HTH Zurich and the Cyprus University of Technology. And Fotis Sotiropoulos is a professor in the Department of Mechanical Engineering and Nuclear Engineering at Virginia Commonwealth University, where he currently serves as Provost and Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs. So, um, Ephthemius Kaxiras is a professor of physics at Harvard University and the department chair of the Depar uh, physics department. Thank you, Ephthemius. So, dear Professor Mitkas, as president of the Hellenic Authority for Higher Education, you find yourself in the position of having a clear view of Greece's higher education landscape, its strengths, weaknesses, area, and areas where there may be room for change. What changes in STEM education in Greece could help students develop skills that may be in better sync with the economy and the job market? Um, let me give you uh, first uh, some uh, uh, numbers uh, about uh, uh, the situation, the current situation in, in Greece since uh, the Hellenic Authority for Higher Education uh, collects the data uh, every year from all the uh, universities in, in the country. Um, STEM education is uh, strong in, uh, in Greece. Uh, if you consider the number of uh, undergraduate programs of study, uh, about 140 in the, in the country, in the 25 uh, uh, higher education institutes, uh, out of a total of uh, about 430 uh, uh, programs of study. So uh, approximately one third is uh, STEM. Um, and that includes, uh, of course, all the programs of study uh, from the former uh, technological education uh, institutes that uh, uh, transferred as uh, um, university uh, programs uh, a few years back. The number of students uh, uh, is, uh, follows a similar trend. Uh, the, uh, the newcomers uh, in 2020 uh, were about 25,000 uh, in total in, in STEM and uh, 60,000 uh, students in uh, non-STEM uh, programs. And uh, the number of graduates, um, uh, unfortunately, uh, the number of graduates, it's, it's, a, it's a universal trend in Greece, uh, does not follow the numbers of, of, of incoming students. Uh, the number of graduates is uh, about 15,000 uh, uh, were 15,000 for the year 2021 uh, in STEM and uh, another 40,000, 40, 41,000 in uh, non-STEM um, education. Um, so the graduation uh, rate uh, is, uh, is about 65 percent uh, for, uh, for the country. If, if you just take uh, the ratio between uh, 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 graduating uh, over uh, incoming uh, students. Um, the uh, STEM education uh, is strong, I would say, because uh, uh, most of the programs are um, in the uh, uh, engineering uh, uh, realm, so uh, 76 programs in engineering. Uh, and those are five-year programs. As you know, uh, the Diploma of Engineering in Greece is a five-year uh, uh, degree, and uh, it, it is uh, heavily uh, uh, loaded with uh, science and engineering uh, classes. Out of the 60 almost uh, uh, courses that students have to take, is uh, uh, 
Professor George has mentioned, very few are known uh, science or engineering, if, if, if any, uh, two or three in each program of study. So uh, our graduates are, are usually well received in uh, graduate uh, programs or, uh, in the country, outside of the country, and uh, of course they are uh, well received as, uh, uh, by employers in, uh, in Europe and, uh, and uh, in, in uh, Northern America. Um, the problems, uh, it's a very high, and I would say unacceptably, but uh, there's very little we can do, very high student to faculty ratio. Uh, in all uh, programs in, in, in Greece, uh, but in, in engineering and in uh, science uh, uh, also. So that does not allow uh, the, um, the, the, the the teachers, the professors, to use all the uh, um, uh, teaching uh, um, paradigms that are available in, in other education systems. For example, uh, weekly homeworks, uh, midterms. Uh, if you have a, a, an audience of 300 students and you don't have any graduate, in assi graduate assistants, there's very little you can do uh, to, uh, to hand out uh, um, uh, papers. Uh, all projects. Uh, some universities, uh, some programs, of course, are better than others. So there is a, a, a quantifiable, I would say, a difference in, in quality between the better or the best uh, programs in the country and those that are, are, that are still uh, lagging uh, behind. Um, not just in terms of uh, faculty and uh, uh, facilities, uh, but also in terms of uh, uh, the ability of students to follow the programs. As I said, the programs are very demanding, uh, and uh, because there are a lot of uh, students entering uh, these programs, in, in certain that are, are, are not the best uh, choices or the first choices, you end up with students uh, that are close to 12,000 uh, out of 20,000 uh, uh, units, uh, uh, so basically average uh, students. The program continues to be very demanding, uh, so a, a lot of these students uh, stay in the system and they, and they cannot uh, graduate. Now, what can we do? Perhaps uh, we'll, we'll go in another uh, round of, uh, of responses because that's a, a whole different story. Uh, I'll let some other people uh, talk. Thank you very much. Um, uh, we're coming now to uh, Apostolis Dimitropoulos. Uh, dear Secretary General, since you assumed office, you have initiated a series of meetings and discussions with your counterparts and with university authorities in many countries around the world seeking to create joint educational programs. What are the goals of your efforts and how can internationalizations not only broaden students' horizons but also contribute to Greece's brain gain as opposed to the already strong uh, brain drain. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Daphne. Um, first of all, I'm deeply honored to be invited and participate in uh, today's event. Uh, in my capacity as Secretary General for Higher Education at the Ministry of Education uh, and Religious Affairs, uh, I would like to express uh, the strong will uh, for cooperation with the Greek diaspora, with Greek scientists abroad. Uh, and. Uh, uh, I know that uh, this is something you uh, have heard many times uh, in the past by officials, but I will try uh, in the short time I have uh, available to show that this is not just words. We are trying to uh, make uh, turn uh, words into concrete actions. Uh, and uh, let me start by saying that uh, um, Greece currently implements a wider internationalization strategy in which higher education, we believe, has a strong role to play. Uh, our main focus uh, is the opening up of our universities to the wider world by launching, as uh, uh, Daphne already mentioned, launching synergies with foreign universities that may involve the creation of joint and dual uh, undergraduate and postgraduate programs, programs taught in English uh, or other foreign languages, participation in summer schools, exchanges of students, academics and researchers, 
exchanges of good practices as well as any other joint initiatives the universities themselves will uh, choose to develop. Our vision is to turn Greece into an education hub, attracting students, scientists and investments from other countries and other continents. Um, and that's a vision shared by the Prime Minister um, uh, Kyriakos Mitsotakis himself, the Minister Kerameos and myself. Uh, let me start by saying that Greek universities uh, cooperate closely and extensively. We know that uh, in, in, with universities in other European uh, Union countries in the context of the Erasmus Plus program. Uh, uh, moreover, uh, almost one out of four Greek universities today also participate in European Universities Alliances, the landmark initiative of Europe in higher education. Um, within the framework of uh, internationalization in our capacity as Ministry of Education, we support and strengthen synergies with universities in countries, not only in the European area, but also outside it. Uh, I'm happy to mention that we are already in a mature stage of uh, bilateral cooperation uh, between Greek and American universities, uh, between Greek and British universities in the post-Brexit era, uh, and also uh, Greek and Chinese universities. And our most recent uh, project underway is the exploration of possibilities for cooperation uh, with universities in India. Uh, as a government, we have prioritized both the upgrading of higher education and the strengthening of the extroversion of our universities. Um, and uh, for that, uh, to, 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 to achieve that, uh, internationalization is a priority goal in all funding instruments we have available. That's, that is the National Development Fund, the European Structural Funds, uh, Fund, ESPA, uh, and the RRF, the Euro Recovery and Resilience uh, Fund. Uh, it is also noteworthy that within the new public allocation, uh, public funding allocation framework for universities, we introduced recently, uh, based partly on the university's performance, uh, it is very encouraging that 11 out of 24 universities uh, have chosen to be evaluated by their perfor performance in the axis of internationalization. This indicates that internationalization has become a strategic goal of these universities, uh, and uh, we also support uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, all universities to develop their strategic capacity by uh, establishing uh, units for strategic uh, uh, planning. Um, we have already uh, results out of all these. We have the first program for English language program at the University of Athens on classics, um, history and archaeology. We have the first medical uh, uh, program at the University of Aristotle last year, which attracted uh, over 1,000 and 200 applications for only 60 places. We have uh, this year uh, the, the, uh, the Athens University Medical Program, which oh, yesterday I, I received the information that it attracted 1,440 applications for, from dif 46 different countries uh, that applied to, to study in the uh, University of Athens uh, English language program. Uh, and I know that uh, other medical schools also, uh, also are in the process of planning their English language programs. Um, uh, moreover, um, three months ago, our university submitted over 2,000, uh, sorry, 200 undergraduate postgraduate or doctoral study programs for financial support under the new scheme designed by the Ministry to support the internationalization of universities. These are 200 foreign language programs, mostly English language, uh, a good number of them jointly organized with foreign universities uh, abroad, and we are confident that many more of them will soon evolve into joint or dual degrees with foreign universities. Um, let me also say a few words about uh, the law that is uh, uh, currently uh, uh, discussed, debated in the Parliament, uh, and uh, uh, that one of, uh, one of its aims is to increase uh, flexibility, autonomy of, of universities, and uh, making it uh, much more easier to, easier to develop their international uh, cooperation uh, activities and become much more open and porous to, to, to the wider uh, academic world. Uh, one of uh, um, this uh, will, one of the provisions, sorry, some of the provisions that will support this uh, in, in the new legal framework uh, is that uh, uh, we revise and we make it much more flexible to have for Greek universities to have visiting professors, visiting researchers, uh, to have joint uh, um, uh, chairs and adjunct professors, uh, to have dual appointments, to have endowed chairs uh, with, where visiting professors can, uh, can uh, uh, um, uh, occupy, uh, to have ERC, the European Research Council chairs, uh, uh, where uh, those that they have ERC um, 
uh, funds, they can uh, ask uh, for a tenure post within uh, Greek universities. Uh, uh, and uh, also, of course, the, the possibility for um, uh, academics from abroad to participate as external members in the uh, re-established university boards uh, that, uh, that the law uh, also uh, introduces. Um, uh, we know we had a, 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 an experience out of the pandemic, and uh, uh, let me uh, take the opportunity to uh, mention here that uh, the, the really uh, special uh, achievement of uh, Greek universities during the pandemic that uh, within uh, two weeks they managed to turn into distance uh, teaching and learning uh, uh, the 96% uh, uh, of all uh, courses uh, offered and the rest 4% were only uh, laboratory uh, uh, work that were not, uh, was not possible uh, to, to turn, uh, or was not easy at least to turn it uh, 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 online. Uh, and we, want, we try to build on that now and we, we uh, really uh, give the possibility uh, to, for all Greek universities to organize at postgraduate level uh, fully uh, distant learning programs uh, uh, and in those programs academics from abroad can offer distant courses uh, and that means that uh, f for you that you, uh, you, you, you work and live abroad, you can have the possibility to offer a course in a Greek university, a full course in a Greek university. And it, it is also uh, a, a new possibility, possibility is that um, you can also, um, Greek universities will also be able to have uh, lectures at an undergraduate level, distant, uh, from, from a distance, from online, um, with the support of uh, technology. Uh, in, in all this, uh, we strongly believe, uh, and I will close with that, I know that my, I have run out of time, uh, we strongly believe that uh, Greece has uh, a rare, if not unique, advantage, and that is the Greek diaspora uh, and the many Greek scientists abroad uh, that can play a really important role in all this international, internationalization strategy uh, we try to implement. And uh, for that, uh, I, 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 uh, it is self-evident that uh, events like uh, today's uh, are really valuable. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dear Margarita Hli, uh, um, you have received important awards for your work in robotics and computer vision, and as many people in the audience are interested in um, uh, computer, sorry? Ah. Uh, many people in the audience are also interested in uh, computing and artificial intelligence. Uh, based on your experience, what, what should be the goal of Greece be for research and development in artificial intelligence and computing? Thank you very much, Daphne. Um, yes, so I think what we need to do is to rebrand Greece's image as uh, an attractive destination for research and development in AI, in computing and robotics. And this is, of course, not to discount any ongoing initiatives that uh, I think uh, we heard some of them before. Um, but overall, out of my own experience, or, or maybe let's say that, so what I, what I think in terms of rebranding uh, Greece's image in, in, in creating an attract, attractive destination for R&D in these areas is that we need to appeal to the society, to the industry, to the students, to the faculty. So society and industry, um, we need to create this culture that with the work that we do in universities, uh, we are meeting the needs of the industry and the society. And uh, as academics, I'm sure you agree, we all want to do basic research. But um, the model that I have seen working very well in, in the UK and uh, also in Switzerland, even better in Switzerland, is um, that um, there is a lot of application driven, a lot of need driven research um, that is very rewarding to students, feeling that they're making a difference, also to faculty, yeah? uh, I'm, I'm in it as well. Uh, it raises visibility um, and recognition from the society and the industry. I remember uh, one of the first uh, articles that I participated in, because ETH is doing this great um, media campaigns, the title of the article was um, ETH Zurich, the Temple of Knowledge. And I was like, wow, really? <laughs> um, but it comes to show uh, how much appreciation the society uh, has for the, 
for the academic uh, development and research that happens within ETH. And uh, how can we make uh, something like this in Greece happen? And I do think that working on topics like this um, that can make, uh, if you'd like, a, a closer difference, a shorter term difference, um, is important in, in attracting more funding, more, more collaborations, more students. Um, and I think in general, this field of AI and computing is something that is a field that doesn't necessarily need a uh, huge investment like biology and, and medicine, clean rooms, etc. And uh, then going to the rebranding of the image for students and faculty, we heard some great ideas before about, you know, we all know exchange visits are the thing, right? So um, send your students abroad, we bring our students here, um, master students, PhD students. Um, at ETH we started having this robotics summer school, which is a week long, um, competitive to enter summer school for master and PhD students. And uh, there is one day symposium with invited speakers, and then there is a whole week where the students team up with each other and they get hands-on tutorials and workshops. They work on robots, they work on a task, a common task that they're given. And then at the end of the week, there's a competition. And of course, that we all know that motivates students like nothing else. And um, it's brilliant to see the ideas, the ideas for collaborations, the ideas for uh, startups that come out of, you know, small efforts like this. And to bring to my last point on how we, um, we can rebrand Greece's image for faculty and, and research leaders. Um, it was mentioned before, um, sabbatical visits, uh, dual professorships, and maybe here comes in a bit of the personal story. Um, I've been 10 years uh, in the UK, 10 years overall in Switzerland, studying and working. And uh, some of you in the room already know that I've been flirting with the idea of returning back home for, for some years now. Home for me um, is both Greece and Cyprus, but Cyprus is where my parents live, so this is more like home right now. So I've been flirting with this idea of returning home, and um, contrary to all career advice, I, um, I'm starting uh, my new steps um, in Cyprus now. And um, contrary to all career advice, and probably some of you already here thinking, oh my God, what is she doing? Um, I guess the question is back on to you, uh, back on to us. Why do you think that, right? Why, what is it that um, we need to fix to make sure that other people um, don't have to make so many sacrifices? And I say this and I start getting emotional, so no, <laughs> calming down. But overall, I'm thinking that how can we make a nourishing environment, right, for, for um, this brain game, for bringing people back, um, to give them independence, to give ERC grantees this opportunity of getting tenured position. And there's a, a star there. I was talking to a friend um, two days ago um, because we were both on the second uh, stage of the ERC consolidator grants. Now you know if I don't get it, I failed. Um, and uh, he was telling me, you know, I tried. I tried to um, ask in Greece whether they would give me a position. And people um, were avoiding the response. And people were also saying, you know, um, ERC grantees don't necessarily get a tenured position. And since we have people here from, uh, from the government, I think it's good also to know that we need incentives, we need better salaries, and people also are here, powerful people from the university, we need reduced teaching load. Uh, let's try to make this a more friendly environment, more nourishing environment for people to want to come back without sacrificing everything or a lot of what they have done so far in their lives. Um, yes, so with this, uh, I'm concluding. So, um, essentially, takeaway message is rebranding Greece's image as a research and development center for AI, computing, robotics, focusing on students, on faculty, on uh, industry, and on society. Thanks. Thank you very much, Margarita. We are now coming on to the last panelist, uh, Professor Sot uh, Fotis Sotiropoulos. You have assumed many uh, different positions at, uh, at the university administration, and you have extensive experience in engineering education programs, 
what scientific and technological areas would be a good fit for Greece, and how could these be implemented in an academic curriculum? Thank you, Daphne, uh, for the great question, and also allow me to uh, express my gratitude and appreciation to the leadership of IAS for organizing this and for also giving me and all of us the opportunity to be here. Uh, I'm really thrilled and excited uh, to be part of this. So allow me to, uh, to offer uh, first a couple of general remarks about the state of higher education in the U.S. right now that builds on the visionary presentation by Dean Yorchos and many other things we heard that sets the stage for some of the things that I would like to propose for Greece. I think right now we live in an exciting time for higher education. It's a time where we all in, the higher, in higher education um, thinking of uh, disruption, dealing with disruption, because there are three major converging forces actually that are converging to, to disrupt higher education. First of all, the pandemic highlighted the impact of technology. We talked about this. How do we deliver knowledge? Uh, are we moving toward a hybrid university of the future where we can use technology to do a lot of the old things, traditional things we've been doing, but in new ways, and at the same time create space to focus on training creative thinkers, problem solvers, entrepreneurs, innovators, and again, building on the things we just heard. The second important uh, uh, force is really the, this emerging era of intelligent machines that we just talked about, right, where humans and intelligent machines will have to enter into this symbiosis time, right? Uh, how do we prepare the workforce for this? Uh, there are some really important questions there. And the third piece is hugging the exponential that Professor George has mentioned, which really implies that the students of 2020, the students of the graduates of 2020, of 21, 22, and going on, they're going to have to be retrained, retooled, upskilled several times throughout their careers. And how are universities ready to provide this kind of education? So, I would like to offer four specific areas uh, when it comes to Greece, the opportunities that I see uh, to develop higher education programs that are well aligned with higher research trusts, and they will be, they are actually, I think they have a potential to shape the Greece of the future as a model knowledge-based economy for, for the region and the world for that matter. The first of all is what we already have been talking about, is how we educate the workforce for the era of intelligent machines. Uh, some people refer to this exciting time as the technocene, when technology is really ushering in a new era in human culture uh, and uh, is redefining human experience. So there are important challenges for what the future of work looks like when AI and automation could cause a big chunk of humans' jobs to, to disappear. So in response to that, we need to think of putting programs together that can cultivate in our students higher level cognitive skills that machines and algorithms will be less likely to be able to replicate. Critical thinking, ethics that Professor George has talked about, the ability to design and work with complex interconnected systems, entrepreneurship, compassion, cross-cultural understanding. And, and since the ultimate objective, hopefully, of all of us is not just to develop cool, powerful algorithms, which is very, very important, of course, but to actually use them to solve problems that improve human life and lift human beings up. Uh, we need to focus on developing, uh, we need to think of how we train a new generation of highly skilled innovators capable of human-centered design of AI and technology solutions. I think Professor George has also alluded to that. Uh, it goes to this, how do we do this smart, ethical, legal, effective, and so on. So I will submit to you that I think our vision for the future of education, while STEM is very important, so you should go beyond STEM. It should focus on new transdisciplinary paradigms that uh, include new kinds of humanities, arts, social sciences, law, and so on, train students. Students who are sufficiently proficient in the basics of computational thinking, but have also been enabled to cultivate higher level cognitive skills uh, and are able to engage in this transdisciplinary design of the knowledge-based economy of the future. Uh, and the design piece is the important thing. Um, the second important area is that I think is really important for Greece is the thinking of how uh, are, we, are we prepared? Are we doing this? Are we training the workforce that we realize and sustain the net zero economy of the future? Greece just recently passed its first climate law, committing actually to a very aggressive goal to uh, become net zero by 2050. Now, this is a monumental challenge, not only for Greece, but for the world as a whole. Uh, and, and, uh, but also it's an opportunity to think of how can Greece lead in research, in education, and community engagement, which is really important to achieve net zero. 
Uh, so we need to think of putting together programs that will, and degrees that will supply the workforce with the green innovators and entrepreneurs, uh, and also education that will produce informed citizens for our future of the democracy, right? Because a big, a big uh, factor, as Professor Yotsos mentioned, is fake news, disbelief in science, and so on. So I think this is an opportunity for building complex and multifaceted set of skills that require cross-disciplinary integration. It's not just uh, how we model and assess net zero pathways, engineering advances to develop technology in renewables, in batteries, uh, energy efficiency, electrification, um, food production, uh, construction materials, our entire way of life need to be redesigned to be net zero. Uh, and again, understanding global law, pub public policy, geopolitical issues, and so on, as we see with the war in Ukraine right now, and so on. An incredible opportunity for, uh, do we have programs that prepare uh, students uh, to, to be effective in this type of workforce. The last, the third piece is, I think, the workforce that will drive the so-called third revolution in medicine, right, which is defined by the convergence of medicine, biology with engineering and technology. I understand that in Greece, traditionally, biomedical engineering has been lagging behind for reasons that I don't quite understand. But I think there is an opportunity to leapfrog this right now by building training paradigms across medicine and most fields of engineering, because the opportunities go beyond biomedical engineering, right? They, they cut across computer science, applied mathematics, electrical and computer engineering, and on and on and on, material science. So we're talking about nanotechnology, drug delivery, drug discovery, organ regeneration through 3D printing, neuroscience and neuroengineering, and so on. The engineers need to understand the clinical challenges. The doctors of the future will have to be prescribing nanobots that will deliver medication to your blood vessels, right? So they need to be technology savvy. Do we have programs for actually doing this? And the last point, which is kind of general that I would like to mention, is training innovators and entrepreneurs. I think this is a big thing, how we produce students and graduates that have uh, the entrepreneurial mindset into their, uh, into their way of thinking, right? Uh, see education not only as a credential for employment, but as a preparation for entrepreneurial endeavors. And I will stop here because there's a lot to talk about this, but I would like to, to put this on, on, uh, on the table for, for discussion and questions. And thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. I think Professor Mitkes wanted to make one more point. Well, uh, um, you have to uh, remember that in Greece, uh, the universities are not as close uh, to uh, the industry, uh, to the national industry. I don't know if uh, there's any uh, representative uh, of uh, the private sector in this audience. I assume that we're all academics. Uh, um, but uh, uh, this is a major impediment for uh, um, uh, all things that happen in Greek universities, both in terms of research and in terms of graduation rates. If the, if the national uh, uh, industry cannot absorb all the graduates of the Greek universities, they don't have a real incentive to, uh, to finish uh, the, their studies. And uh, uh, Professor Hli mentioned that uh, we need to rebrand the Greek university. Yes, we have to make sure that the uh, national industry works with uh, the universities and with the research centers to develop solutions for, uh, for them. And this is a, an uphill uh, battle, but uh, it, it would make tremendous change for the uh, universities, uh, the university scenes in, in, in the country. Thank you very much. Um, I will now pass the microphone to Professor Kaxiras, who will coordinate the question and answer session with the audience. Okay, thank you. Uh, good morning uh, from me as well. Uh, uh, Daphne already mentioned my uh, affiliation, so I'll jump right to the uh, 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 questions. So we had uh, scheduled about half an hour for questions. We're running a little bit late because everybody, I take that as an indication that everybody is very excited to share their thoughts. We have so many uh, uh, ideas to communicate and this is wonderful. So, uh, but I don't want to cheat the audience from the possibility of asking questions, so we'll still a little bit of time from the coffee break if needed. So, uh, uh, please uh, uh, raise your hand to ask questions to any specific member of the panel, uh, including our keynote uh, speaker. They all uh, uh, presented very inspiring thoughts. 
Uh, and uh, if you wish, you can identify the person to whom you, you are asking the question or address it to the entire panel. Yes, so let's start with this. Maria Papazopouli. Thank you. So, uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate all of you for organizing uh, the Hellenic Institute of Advanced Studies. It's a great effort. Um, and I would like to say the following. I would like to ask a quick question. Um, I have been uh, in US for 12 years as a graduate student and then as a faculty. And now I'm at the University of Crete and at Forth, which I believe that it is an oasis in terms of research, science, and innovation in Greece. So my question is the following. All, this, all the comments and the insightful observations that you made were extremely important. But I think that, in my opinion, the critical aspect that it is missing here is the funding, funding from the government. Um, we are struggling to do research with very few resources here in uh, Greece. And, Many times I believe that it is a heroic effort from our part. So I think that, I mean, Greece does not lack from collaboration, mobility, adaptation, um, uh, curiosity, intellectual curiosity. We have passionate students, researchers, faculty. What we really lack is funding, funding from the government. This is number one. And number two, okay, okay it is uh, less bureaucracy. We are struggling with the bureaucracy. We are doing a heroic effort here in Greece. So we need to address this issue. And the third, last part is this, um, the relation between industry and uh, university. But I'm more optimistic about this. Uh, I already see things changing in Crete, at least. And last, last comment and wish, I really hope to have this activity also in Crete. And it would be an honor to host you at the University of Crete and Forth. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, thank you for the uh, question. Actually, the issues about funding and uh, uh, bureaucracy are more like uh, statements rather than questions. <coughs> and I'm not sure what uh, Hayas can do about those. But let me uh, take the last part of your uh, uh, question and try to see if uh, panelists would like to address this. To repeat the well, you, you seem to be more optimistic than than I am. So yeah, the, I, yeah, I, I guess uh, yeah. you, you have a better answer than. <laughs> yeah, the, the connection between uh, <laughs> uh, industry. Uh, and no, the... I, uh, definitely there are um, um, several steps that universities have taken over the last uh, few, uh, few years, and that bring them closer to uh, to industry. And and the trust is improving between uh, the two parts. But but there are whole sectors that do not. See, uh, do not seek solutions at, at Greek universities or, or research centers. And, uh, and uh, I, I would like those of us who are in, in Greece to, to wonder how many of our research results have been adopted uh, by, by the Greek uh, industry. We, 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 we work mostly for European research projects that uh, have the European uh, um, uh, industry uh, needs in, in mind. And we provide good solutions, but I don't think they are adopted by uh, the E, by OTE, by uh, uh, the Greek army, which does very little with uh, 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 the Greek universities. So we have to build these channels, uh, build them. But building on this, perhaps, uh, uh, is there anything, is there any actionable items that we could uh, uh, help with in, in uh, enhancing this interaction? I, I think there is an action item, and the action item is the next uh, uh, iteration of this event to also invite people from the industry to, f to begin with. I think that's very important. I just want to make a point that the National Academy of Engineering, by construction, is supposed to be 50% people from the business world and the corporate world and the other 50% from academics to the chagrin of the academic uh, community because they you know, have less, has more competition to get into the academy. But actually this is happening in the United States. It's um, for engineering, not sciences, but for engineering. Thank you, Professor Yorzos. Actually, we do have contacts with uh, with various uh, parts of uh, the uh, uh, 
engineering, or no, excuse me, uh, 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 industrial uh, 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 and entrepreneurial uh, uh, world in Greece, uh, but uh, unfortunately we don't have representation today or uh, adequate representation today, but this is a very good point. I think it's uh, uh, important for us to continue in that direction. Okay, may, let me... May I? Oh, sorry. Please, please go ahead. Just real quick about um, potential actional, uh, actionable items in terms of connecting industry with universities. Uh, one of the things that uh, we are uh, doing, and many other universities are doing right now, is focus on project-based learning. Engaging teams of students that in projects uh, involving students from different disciplines to working throughout their educational experience to solve an important problem. This problem could be funded by industry, could be defined by industry, for instance, because it helps train the type of workforce that they need. It could be in partnership with the government. I mean, for instance, Greece right now has led in terms of using technology to take on bureaucracy. And there's a lot of progress that has been made in a very brief period of time. Now, I think there are opportunities if we think of introducing project-based experiential learning, where you get teams of students along with faculty, and that also provides opportunities for collaboration across the different countries and engaging all of us from, from uh, wherever we happen to be, uh, to develop these teams and get industry engaged in that, but getting students to solve problems, uh, to actually do things that could ultimately either help create the skills that they need or achieve something very important that could lead to entrepreneurial activities, it could be of value to industry or to government or to communities. Thank you. So let's take uh, a question. Oh, yeah. If I may. Uh, it's on now. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for this excellent meeting. I want to talk about this point because, as far as I'm concerned, I'm involved with, in these kind of programs in Greece for almost 40 years. This is a major weakness, as Professor Mitt has mentioned. So I am from the University of Maryland. I also I work with the Royal Institute of Technology in Sweden and Technical University of Munich. So I can give you the experience from there. Engineering must connect to industry. That's a must. It doesn't happen in Greece. How it can happen? By encouraging apprenticeship programs like we have in Germany where even high school students go and work in industry, industrial labs and internships with industry. Currently, we are trying to work out a collaboration program between Sweden, Greece and Germany to bring these kind of programs to fruition, where you get students from universities and high schools to get involved with this. And one idea that I'd like to ask the Hellenic Institute for Advanced Study to help or make it a challenge is to try to get foreign companies who have satellite parts in Greece to get involved with that. And then that can be a good start, okay? And then you can actually expand it and so on and so forth. And this links very nicely with something which is called in Europe in the US, total innovation systems, where you teach students from uh, the first year to graduation, to entrepreneurship, to boot camps and so on and so forth. All this is a package goes together if it doesn't happen in Greece, you're not going to see engineering, in particular education in engineering, linked to economy. This is a very important part. We have to link to economy and society. Thank you. Uh, so, any of the panelists who would like to comment? Please, please, please. Yeah, I would like to make a uh, hopefully short comment about uh, the f lack of funding and bureaucracy. Uh, I am one of, one of those that uh, believe uh, that at this particular moment, uh, the lack of funding is not the problem. We have, at the Ministry of Education only, um, we have one billion uh, for uh, universities, including educational activities or research activities. However, the difficulty is the European regulations that we have to uh, handle so that we can use that money. Uh, on on, on uh, those uh, regulations that uh, are under our control, our, our the, the national level control, uh, you know probably that one of the goals of the, the law that is now debated at the Parliament is exactly to make um, um, the, the handling of uh, research funds much more uh, easy 
to, to, to um, handle within the universities. Uh, I mean the healthcare reg regulations and so on. I, I'm sure you are quite familiar with that. Um, and, but this is not the only regulations we have to uh, comply with. There are also European regulations. We have the funding, but it's difficult to, to, to really manage that. Thank you. So let me see. Uh, yeah, please, go ahead. Uh, Mark De Lagudas from Texas A&M University. I really love being here. Thank you for coming along. I wanted to make a question which is very practical. Uh, I run a large showcase for capstone projects, about 1,200 engineering students. I run Innovate for Defense and Innovate for Homeland Security. I'm interested to collaborate with universities here. I feel like we are talking maybe among ourselves, if are all external people. How do we, what is the follow-up? How do we find the people right now? I'm glad to see Dr. Mitkas. We are, we were at the University of Thessaloniki. We are developing collaborations with them, but how do we follow up with others who are interested? I would love to take some of the international companies and have them do capstone projects on both sides. Our students will benefit, your students will benefit. So my general question is to the organizers. How do we follow up on this? Thank you. Thank you for the question. Uh, let's see if the panelists have some thoughts on this. Uh, I, th I think it's easy. Uh, just spread out the word and uh, there are going to be people from universities participating in, in, in HIAS or interested in, in HIAS and then the, these connections uh, as it happens all over the world. I mean, uh, you need one or two pe uh, persons in each department or uh, each uh, school. Uh, faculty of engineering, for example, and then it, they will uh, run their own, uh, their own process. So uh, you have to spread the word. We have okay. to spread the word uh, about, uh, about hires or do some events like uh, hackathons, for yeah. example. Th Thank you. So maybe uh, uh, hires can figure out ways of uh, yeah. acti uh, acting as a forum for this, for, uh, as an exchange uh, uh, mechanism for these possibilities. Yes, uh, Dimitri. Question I would like to ask. Dimitris um, Bertimas, uh, MIT. So, science and engineering in the last 100, century, uh, 100 years, I would say, developed primarily in silos. There's a chemical engineering department, there's a medical uh, physics, and so forth. In recent years, particularly intelligent machines, artificial intelligence, and so forth, has the, has the promise, and sometimes the reality, to unify and revolutionize fields in such a way that the structure of universities that it is today, at least in some environments like mine, is questioned. Recently, MIT has developed uh, this uh, Swarzman College of Computing, which is really a Swarzman College of Artificial Intelligence, in which uh, people from different departments collaborate. Uh, in my view, I'm excited, of course, uh, there's local bias. I'm excited about this prospect. And I would like to, uh, to ask uh, the panelists uh, whether you feel such an idea is good for Greece and is also realistic for Greece. Okay, so uh, let's see who. Yeah, I mean, first of all, I think it's a great idea. Whether it's realistic, I, it's a different story. But I think you, you, you put it very well. Uh, all of us in academic institutions, we are organized in ways that are hundreds of years old, right? And right now, this is kind of sweeping everything. It's this integration of across disciplines, and not only within STEM and engineering, but with other disciplines as well, right? And the opportunity. So I think the real opportunities for universities everywhere is how to develop these ways, how to break silos and create these structures, really, that drive this, uh, move forward into the future. Now. I think there are a lot of practical ideas, not all, difficulties, not only in Greece, but in the U.S. as well, right? Because our, our faculty colleagues, they like to do things a certain way. Everybody feels that their area is very important, and I understand that. But I think if we focus on a transdisciplinary mindset, which is not only doing basic research, but also applying to solve problems and make a difference to community and society as a whole, uh, that might provide an organizing framework for actually motivating a lot of this change. But you brought up a great issue that I think it is important. That's what I was talking about, the uh, opportunity for disrupting higher education. But it's also one that it's not easy, uh, but it will happen. Those that will do it, I think that will be the universities that lead in the future. If I may add, I think that there is a, uh, an initiative on robotics 
evolve and develop in, uh, out of this uh, uh, um, uh, institute. Or, or, and uh, we're going to see if, how this works, if it, if it is inclusive or if it uh, involves a lot of uh, people from different uh, departments, uh, then it's going to be a good example uh, for other thematic uh, uh, efforts. And uh, of course, you know very well that funding is always the uh, driving <laughs> mechanism for that. If, if there is driving, uh, if there is funding for, for, for an issue, then uh, people will follow. Yes, please. Yeah. Um, yes, funding is important, but uh, regulations are, are also important. And I think it's important to mention here that, again, the new law makes, uh, I think, a breakthrough by uh, really making it possible for every single department to offer different degrees, different programs leading to degrees, uh, alone or in cooperation with other uh, departments of the same school or of different schools or of different uh, uh, institutions, different universities. And that's for the, uh, I think, for, it's for the first time that it, it, it really happens. Uh, and that means that uh, students will um, enter into um, one department, but then the possibilities to, to really choose about what exactly what program they will follow and they will complete uh, is going to depend on their own choice. Uh, thus, th this opens up the possibility for all interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary uh, programs. Uh, and uh, uh, one of the things, apart from the, uh, the legislation that uh, is going to make it really uh, possible and flexible, that uh, flexible in the sense that it will not require uh, any longer the approval by the ministry, uh, it will be a decision by the institution uh, and uh, the accreditation by the accreditation uh, agency. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm already uh, working on uh, uh, preparing the financial support for these uh, new programs to, to, uh, to be uh, supported uh, so that we can see in the near future, uh, we see a different landscape of programs offered by Greek uh, universities, uh, along with the foreign language programs, the, the new programs, the interdisciplinary programs in uh, uh, areas and disciplines uh, that uh, are really uh, important for the future. Yes, please. Um, the concept of uh, um, uh, joint departments is picking up a lot more steam in the U.S. than now, um, but mostly between different schools, for example, engineering and medicine. I mean, biomedical, there are lots of joint departments across the, the, the world, in the, I mean, the U.S. in this area. In our own school, we have a joint department, the School of Cinematic Arts, that has computer science and cinematic arts and provides people that do games, um, for example. Uh, these are interesting areas because you bring people from different backgrounds and put them together and then we have a joint degree to some extent. So I think it is happening, whether it is possible to happen in, 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 this, in, in Greece, I, unfortunately I can't tell because I don't know. The, but it would seem to me that it would be interesting to actually branch out from an engineering school to a non-engineering school in the same university to create these partnerships. I think there's a lot more to be discovered in that intersection. Thank you. So let me see for more questions. Yes, please. Hello. Yeah. Uh, Giannakis from the University of Minnesota. Thank you all organizers and panelists for a wonderful event and uh, the panelists for your comments on education. Based on my limited experience with uh, evaluation boards and accreditation boards, uh, the number one issue that was not brought up relates to self-governance of Greek universities. So my question is, how can HIAS contribute towards self-governance of Greek universities. And I'm pretty sure uh, Professor Medicas and Apostolopoulos will have more to say about that. Uh, the number one issue that comes up in all these evaluation boards, number two is the graduation rate. Yes, thank you. So uh, who, who would like to comment on this? Well, that's... Uh, I will have uh, again to defend the law that is uh, now the Parliament. Uh, and if there is 
uh, uh, if there is one word to uh, and one title for, for this uh, particular law, uh, I would uh, have chosen uh, to call it the autonomy law uh, for Greek universities. Uh, there are many, many uh, new responsibilities that are transferred from the uh, ministry to the universities themselves, and that will definitely uh, make things uh, less bureaucratic, easier, uh, and will uh, make the system much more flexible and adaptable to, 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 to the future. Uh, that is uh, um, uh, one thing. The, the, the second point you... About the, 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 graduate, the graduation rate. That, that, that's really... That's, yeah, yeah. It's really, it's really poor. Yeah. 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 Well, th thank you. Uh, I think this is... Uh, I'd like to remind both the panelists and, and the, the, the uh, audience uh, to, to think of uh, the questions and this discussion in the context of actionable items. And I think a possibility would be for HIAS to be able to communicate with uh, uh, agencies, uh, governmental agencies, mm -hmm. and translate the new law into uh, uh, mm -hmm. possibilities of uh, mm -hmm. enhancing these interactions or something like this. And I'm glad we have representatives from uh, 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 the Greek uh, uh, academic institutions and, and uh, uh, the, the Ministry of Education to uh, uh, help us along this way. So I'll take the next question. Yes, uh, please. Um, Thanos Panagiotopoulos from uh, Princeton University. Just following up on this comment on actionable, actionable items and also the new law that's being brought in, um, I'm under the impression that it reintroduces to some extent the, the concept of uh, councils for the, for the units that bring in or can bring in external um, academics to support the administration, director, and, and the Tosimvulio Idrimatos, the old mm -hmm. idea that's being mm -hmm. revived. Um, would it make sense for HIAS, for example, to be a conduit or a pool or members or uh, advertise the availability of that and help establish, uh, establish those, uh, those councils in a, in a better way than the old law? Thank you for the question. Uh, any suggestions? Sure, why not? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I, I think that's I, right. I, 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 don't, I don't think that there's going to be uh, an organized uh, effort to <laughs> uh, distribute uh, uh, professors in, in various uh, uh, councils in, in Greece, but uh, spread the word again and, and uh, see if uh, people are interested. Uh, it is crucial if uh, these... Uh, uh, councils begin to uh, operate and they are established. We need to have the best uh, uh, people we can get uh, from uh, inside and outside the country. Thank you. But it will require a lot of time, okay, because they, um, they are actually executive uh, uh, boards. Uh, as a Secretary General, I should uh, refrain for suggesting specific things and uh, I, I think it's my um, obligation to obey with the principle of self-governance of universities. That means that the universities themselves will choose uh, who to appoint to the, as external members to uh, the university boards. Uh, I, I can only say that we'll be uh, very happy to see academics from abroad, li uh, from abroad like uh, those that are present here uh, today to participate uh, in, in, in these new university board boards. Thank you. So let me take one from the back. Okay, uh, Kyriakopoulos from National Technical University of Athens. We spent quite a bit of time discussing about uh, the possibilities and the way to somehow uh, connect the activity uh, of the universities with the private sector and particularly to the so-called quotes, Greek industry, whatever that means. Um, but we didn't spend, in other words, we, 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 we consider the issue of how to make our students employable and useful to industry, but we didn't spend any time, to, at least today, about how to make our students creating jobs instead of looking for jobs. Uh, we didn't discuss at all about the opportunities of having spin-offs new companies and uh, such type of, with a new economy 
to make our students not go after the industrialists, but be the new era industrialists. Any comments? Yes, thank you for the question. Uh, let me just uh, mention that there's a whole uh, session in the afternoon devoted to this issue, and I think we'll have many more opportunities to address these types of issues in, in the afternoon. I don't know if any of the panelists would like to make a quick comment on this, and then we can move to a, a next quick topic. comment. I don't know if any of you were uh, at the General Assembly of the of SEV, the uh, uh, Association of Industrial uh, Industrialists in, in in Greece, uh, uh, about uh, a month ago, and um, the the president mentioned that uh, the spin off the, the 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 startup scene in, in greece is is getting uh, bigger and, and bigger and uh, he uh, he quoted some numbers like uh, uh, 7000 new uh, jobs uh, um, have been uh, created and and the overall zeros uh, 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 is in the is in is approaching a billion. So uh, they are uh, looking at it. They are supporting it, and we are looking. Uh, we are recording these steps. I mean, there were 13 new spin-offs uh, uh, reported by the Greek universities last year in 2021, and the number uh, is is much different from the zero that was uh, five years ago. So. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Professor. Hey, Jordan, just real yeah. quick, yeah. can I just coming to you in a second, Professor? Uh, also wanted I mean, there are oh, so sorry. many models out there for education part that actually are feasible. They are not uh, onerous. The material is not complicated. You don't have to take a, you know, five courses on, on innovation and, and entrepreneurship. How I do this? So, this can be easily uh, in, uh, created or implemented. It's just a matter of making sure that, um, again, I don't know what bureaucracies exist in terms of change in curricula, but certainly you can do this without major issues. And you know, the models out there are easy. They are very well received by students. You have competitions. You have uh, then. Uh, VCs come in, they have angels, we have all kinds of people. I mean, creating these ecosystems can be done. Uh, just a matter of making decision that this is what we want to do. Thank you. Professor Dropoulos? Uh, just real quick. Sorry, I didn't see that Professor Georgios was coming up. Uh, just to, I mean, I think Professor Georgios covered it very well. I think there are models. It can be done. And essentially, there are four major things. One is to change the student mindset that entrepreneurship is actually a valid outcome of their education. They need to understand that. The second is curricular integration, how we incorporate entrepreneurs in different aspects throughout the entire curriculum, not only in engineering, because entrepreneurs will come from many other fields, right? The third is changing faculty mindset, because we have faculty that are not thinking, many, many of us are not thinking along these ways, right? So how we do this? And the, the fourth one is really mentoring structures and connecting and promoting entrepreneurship, connecting students with successful entrepreneurs and so on. But I think there are models, it is possible, uh, and this is really an exciting endeavor for the future, really. Okay, uh, I will take one last question because I didn't want to cheat you from the question time, but I don't want to cheat you from the coffee break either. So please go ahead. Yes. So my name is uh, Nenis, Athanasios Nenis from EPFL. And I just have a few comments that could be actionable items. So first of all, for the effort to recruit new professors or established professors back to Greece, the brain gain, one thing that could be done that highest can help out is with the two-body problem. Very often there's a significant other, and many cases have failed because of that, and I speak from experience. So HIAS can help facilitate finding career placement for this significant other. The other thing that could be done is uh, essentially that uh, you, we can have workshops organized to expose students to all the things that could be done, and this is regardless of the, the program that we have here. So it's not just uh, to the universities, but it's something that the uh, highest can do. Thank you. Thank you. So, well, uh, thank you for the he very helpful comments. So th since this was not a question, I'll take one more question. <laughs> 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 so let me see. Okay, one from the back there. Hello, um, my name is Dionis Christopoulos. I am from the Technical University of Crete. We have mostly focused today on uh, education at the university level, but the secondary educational system is also very important, as Professor Georgios mentioned. It used to be a gem of the Greek education. 
I'm afraid this is not so any longer, and I speak from experience, seeing what is happening in the secondary system, and also that has an impact on the quality of the students that we admit in the universities. So how can HIAS help to address this issue, especially since all the recent governments have not really done much to address the problem? And yeah, thank you for the question. Uh, let me just make a very quick comment. Uh, earlier uh, on, uh, before this session began, I had a, a chance to talk very briefly to uh, uh, Dr. Dimitropoulos. I think that's a key point, and I think we can do a lot. Uh, I think if we put our minds together, there's a, a, a lot of possibilities and opportunities. Let me see if the panel has some more comments. I don't know if uh, the former Minister of Education, uh, Kostas Gavrol, would like to say something about uh, high, I mean, high school education, because I'm not an expert in high school education. I don't want to say. <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if uh, I, <laughs> the General Secretary. Chairman, if I, if I may. Please. Um, I, th I think you're right about high school education. I think the most important thing is that there is a social consensus that high school is not the way you get into the university, but there is an institution outside high school, the so-called frontisteria, the shadow, edu uh, shadow education, that gets you into the university. The objective result of this is that high schools are no more those institutions that educate you they don't even prepare you for universities. So that, I think, is, is a very serious ideological issue uh, concerning high schools. Uh, I will not take your time commenting on various other things, but I think very clearly. Yeah, thank you. I'd like to uh, stop the session here because there's uh, relatively little time left for uh, the coffee break. I'd like to resume uh, our uh, next panel at 11.30 sharp. Thank you very much.